AMD has been making great, great strides with Rockm and their MI and CDNA. Today I'm going to show you how to update the firmware on your MI 200s so that you can run basically the Rockm stack under VMware 8 with the new VMware extensions for that for containers and orchestration and infrastructure as code because infrastructure as code is the future and you need to get your feet wet with that just a little bit. But also, this is really cool. We can run Stable Diffusion and everything else from the AMD side of things. Yeah, turns out. Got a forum thread on that. That's another thing. That's going to be a different video. Let's, uh, let's dive in. All right, the first thing that you got to know is I'm rocking the Super Micro Big Twin 2U2 node system. This thing has six MI250s in it. This is a, a fabulously expensive system. I gotta send it back soon, but I'm trying to get some quality time with Rockm and container orchestration. See, it's not enough that you have a GPU that can run Rockm. It's not enough that you have systems that are running Ubuntu or multi-user and you're able to do stuff. You need a little bit more separation. You need containerization. How are you gonna manage this? VMware is a popular choice for that. This is not a benchmark of VMware or anything like that. This is just to show you the functionality that's available with VMware 8 because there have been a ton of positive improvements in VMware under the hood and this is just one of them. We can take our six MI210s in this platform and slice them up among any number of virtual machines. The VRAM processes the whole nine yards. In order to do that, we get to start by updating the firmware. And you can't really easily update the firmware from within VMware. So the easiest way that I've found to do this is to use an Ubuntu Server Installer Live USB. So to begin this process, you basically just create an Ubuntu Live USB installer, like you're going to install Ubuntu over your VMware machine, although we're not gonna do that, we're just gonna boot off USB, and we can do everything via remote management, the IPMI. Once you've got your USB made, I assume you know how to do that, you just boot, and you're good to go. Now, to do this video, I, my capture machine and the thing that's running the, the audio, because who wants to be in that loud server closet? I've got a setup where I can SSH into it, but because this is an installer, it's a little weird. You can't SSH into the installer out of the box. Well, you can set the password and then you can SSH into it and then that works fine. It's a little weird on the AMD download page. It looks like the download button is missing. It's not, it just takes you to a PDF. And then the PDF walks you through making permanent changes to your Ubuntu system, but this is a live installer USB. It's going to be gone as soon as I reboot the machine. That's okay. That's all we need to update this firmware. This is a really easy process. We're going to follow the guide and just copy paste in here. It's a little weird, the formatting, because of this PDF. I really could have done a little bit better job here because with the formatting, you end up with some extra line breaks you don't need. So be careful when you're pasting content in here or just retype them knowing that you probably don't actually have line breaks. Maybe they expect you to retype it and not copy paste it. No copy paste? What is this? 1997? Come on. Anyway, all right, we're good to go. We're able to run the AMD firmware update tool. And I just did dash U. The manual talks about update I, F, W, but I, I typoed that. You just do U. It should scan and find the GPUs. Now, if it says you're GPU is in use, you can just RM mod AMD GPU because again, this is the installer. And even though it loaded the kernel module, it's not actually using it. The, the installation guide talks about blacklisting the AMD GPU driver and rebooting so that the AMD GPU module is not loaded. This is an installer, you don't have to do that because we're just doing this to update the firmware for VMware. So this, this part of the guide doesn't really exactly 100% apply to us. Now from here, we can run the tool, Agree to the EULA, and uh, yeah, it's gonna say, oh, I found their GPUs. And then you just do dash U, and it does the update. It'll go through with the update. It'll take a little bit to run. And at this point, we wanna power down the system in order to uh, proceed. Now, because this is the two U2 node system, I've only updated three out of my six GPUs. In a real world scenario, this two nodes could be part of a VMware cluster, assuming my witness is running somewhere else. Eh, it could be running on a Synology NAS. Not recommended, but eh, it works. I've done it. You'll want to uh, 
finish all this on this node, and then you can migrate your virtual machines from the other node to this one, which will be back to running VMware in just a moment. And then we will be able to update the other node. That's how that normally works. You migrate everything off the host and then booting from USB to update the firmware, not a big deal. That's resiliency and, and good solid engineering and architecture of VMware. So this, this kind of an update process uh, is not really much of a problem. For this video, I'm gonna walk you through just kind of a fresh installation of VMware. So you wanna log into the VMware portal and download your, uh, your ESXi installer as, as well as vSphere. vSphere is what you use for managing, ESXi is what runs on the host. Generally, you don't wanna do much of anything from the ESXi web interface. I know it's there, and I know you can get the free version of ESXi, but look, if you're living in the VMware world, you really should just commit to the $200 a year, whatever it is, like the personal home training license thing, whatever it is, because that unlocks basically everything that VMware has. And yeah, it's still a subscription, and yeah, $200 a year is still kind of a lot of money, but you'll be able to play with all this on your own personal hardware and non-production, you know, hardware learning kind of stuff. That's kind of why it's there. But for this video, I'm just doing the 60 day trial. Don't copy paste my serial numbers if I forgot to, if I forgot to delete those. You make again another bootable USB installer and uh, you do the installation. You can do it over IPMI or you can do it from the data center. The installation for VMware is pretty straightforward, and if you've ever installed VMware before, well, not a lot is different with VMware 8, if this is your first look at VMware 8. Streamlined a bit, but uh, not a lot different. Logging into ESXi, visually it's got a facelift, but, you know, ESXi, most of the magic actually is in vSphere, but there are a couple of things that you can do from ESXi before you install vSphere if you want. The first is to enable SSH. We're gonna be installing a vib here, which is like a driver VMware thing. Uh, and this is VMware 8 native. So AMD's got support basically from day one for VMware 8, which is pretty awesome. Uh, then we need to log in with SSH and install it. Now I had to install it by telling it to disable certificate checking, but there's also a zip file. Like sometimes the, you install a zip or you specify a zip that contains a vib versus specifying the raw vib. I specify the raw vib. And it's fine, but I uploaded everything that was in the archive. There wasn't really anything in the firmware update PDF that had exactly a you know a step-by-step -step administration. I think for if you if you've been through the VMware training and certification, you probably already know how to install a VIB network driver. You've probably already been through that for various kinds of things that you might encounter. But that's pretty much all there is to it. It says it doesn't require a reboot. So the next thing we'll do is make sure our data store is configured, upload an Ubuntu ISO, and see if we can configure a virtual machine. Now, in case you're not familiar with what we're trying to do with VMware here, this is shared pass-through graphics compatibility. Uh, it's actually even listed on the VMware compatibility guide. So VMware does sort of sanction this behavior. The MI210 support for this is a little bit bleeding edge. Okay, sure. But you'll be able to run this under the uh, Ubuntu operating system. This is different than the VDI infrastructure. This is different than other types of GPU sharing technology. This is really meant for Rockm and the compute side of things. So, you know, if all else fails, be sure to check the VMware compatibility list, but you can kind of use this as a rough guide to set it up and start experimenting and see what the options are. Now, if you've never done GPUs or virtual functions, or you're messing around with this on a lab machine, or you picked up one of these on eBay, or even the MX25, as far as that goes, there's still plenty you can learn on ancient, <laughs> ancient GPUs. Uh, you might get a lot of frustrating errors from VMware. It's like, oh, it won't start, there's problems. Most of the time, it's because you forgot to enable above 4G decoding in BIOS. Sometimes there are some advanced parameters that you need to set on your uh, virtual machine. So if you log in via SSH and you search for VMware.log, that's usually the easiest place to check for it. If you've got vSphere installed, you can also get the VMware logs that way. ESXi is not often perfectly reliable as far as this goes. They really want you to use vSphere to do management. I like to do everything from SSH, that's just me. It's usually pretty easy to find that VMware.log, it's usually in your primary data store. Although your error message is something about like device power on, won't power on, or you know, whatever. That's nothing to do with AMD and nothing to do with VMware, nothing to do with anything like that. It's something you need to configure so that the memory mapped IO doesn't require any 
translation when it goes from physical to virtual to physical. The other thing is that uh, you do, it's a good idea to set PCIe or PCI passthroughu 64 bit MMIO to true and PCIe or PCI passthrough.64 bit MMIO size to 128. Where you do that is in, in the advanced properties of your virtual machine. So you want to uh, edit the settings and go to VM options and then advanced and then edit configuration. And for, don't use edge for this. You should use Chrome probably um, because when you hit add parameter, there's all kinds of bugs here. They don't even expect you really to use ESXi. It's, uh, they want you to use vSphere. And just like that, we're able to add our PCIe device. Cool. Good stuff. Now, let's see if we can get it to show up in Ubuntu, in the virtual machine, and run Rock M as normal. When you're doing your setup, don't worry if you get an error. It just means that there was a kernel update for your install when you're doing, you know, apt inside it pops up and says, oh, there's some system updates you need to update. Not a problem. Just reboot, rerun the installer. It's fine. Now, as I was preparing this video, I've actually been working on this video for a while. When I first set it up, I got Rock M 5.3. But I'm using Ubuntu 22.04 LTS because this is a fresh install. I'm going through everything again for this video to make sure it's all still current. And I ran into another issue that wasn't the kernel problem where you just update the kernel and reboot. Where it was uh, an issue on GitHub where it's like DMA underscore RESV points to sequence is missing. This is trying to build for the kernel. This originally happened like back on 5.9 but this is happening again on 5.19 because they're changing the way the kernel works internally. Once we're past all the DKMS kerfuffle, we're able to run the Rockim Validation Suite. You can just apt install Rockim Validation Suite and then run the Rockim Validation Suite to see what the output is. And in our case, because we've only passed through the one GPU, we can see here 42 watts running currently, 300 watt power cap, currently 39 degrees C, not bad. If you want to go from here and install something like Docker or some other containerization or platform management thing or whatever there is actually pretty good support for that at this point with the Rockm base there's still some rough edges but Hindi's come a long way with Rockm 5 and on 5.4 that hard work has not gone unnoticed you know it sort of took a while to get support for Ubuntu 22.04 and there was a lot of uh, you know sort of hard won lessons learned spinning up the stack and, and getting everything going, AMD's got to, to build momentum and build that gargantuan inertia for these kinds of things because this level of functionality and this uh, infrastructure eventually will be able to move mountains. By building this, it means that system administrators and people that manage the systems can allocate virtual machines and assign parts of the GPU or the entire GPU to one research group or team or whatever and then that team is reasonably sandboxed uh, you know with their virtual machine so that they're not necessarily going to disturb other people that are using the same resources you don't have to have the same overhead and complexity of giving somebody dedicated hardware resources dedicated gpu resources in this case because gpus are expensive compute gpus are, are expensive but you can sort of share the load among a whole bunch of different people that are running a whole bunch of different jobs without really interfering with one another, which is nice. And you get to use it with your existing VMware infrastructure, which is also nice. A lot of people look for that. A lot of people look to be able to move the virtual machines between containers and all that kind of thing. And it's a little tricky to do when we're talking about passing through PCIe devices. That makes things a little more complicated, obviously, because live migrating a running virtual machine when you're passing through a PCIe device, that's not going to work unless the the, the device builder builds in a whole bunch of stuff to do state management so that you could move a job running on a piece of hardware from one piece of hardware to another. It, it works a little differently than networking and everything else, so I don't know. This has been a quick look at Rockm on the VMware platform, getting that installed, set up, up and running, and on our Supermicro Big Twin 2U2 node system, rocking 32 core AMD Epic Milan CPUs, 256 gigs of memory per node, and three Instinct MI210 graphics cards. That is a ridiculous amount of graphics horsepower. If you're looking for something a little bit more pedestrian, we do actually already have the Stable Diffusion Guide on the Level 1 Forum. Gigabuster put that together. You should check that out. This sort of dovetails with that. This isn't that video. There's another video coming about getting all of that running, and oh boy, those are fast. Shockingly fast. 
It's all about the software stack, though. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums.